Hello and welcome to Panoramic Edition, where we discuss national, regional and international developments in depth. With the aim of highlighting the latest world practices in the fields of dermatology, laser and aesthetics and applying them in Bahrain to consolidate the kingdom's progress in this field through increasing the knowledge and skills of the relevant Bahraini competencies in this regard, the 7th edition of Bahrain Dermatology, Laser and Aesthetics Conference and Exhibition BDLA is held with the participation of esteemed local, regional and international dermatologists and plastic surgeons alongside strategic partnerships with leading organizations and associations. All this and more in our in-depth discussion right after this. Welcome back. We're pleased to be joined here in the studio by consultant dermatologist and the general secretary of the executive committee of Bahrain Dermatology, Laser and Aesthetics Conference and Exhibition, BDLA, Dr. Hussein Jamaa. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation and opportunity. Doctor, this um, exhibition is uh, very sought after. It's in its seventh edition. Everybody's yes. anticipating what's new, what's going to come, what's going to be offered on the agenda. Um, the exhibition is one of the most vital events held in the Kingdom of Bahrain. What can you tell us about the objectives and why it's so important? Actually, as part of our job as dermatologists and doctors, we have to do something called continuous medical education. Mm -hmm. You know, dermatology is really uh, a vital uh, part of medicine in which the diseases, diagnosis, management, updates in uh, machines, in laser, it's all dynamic. Yes. If we don't update ourselves, then we'll be part of the past. So actually the aim of the conference and exhibition to bridge the gaps in knowledge and also to share the knowledge to others and give opportunity to the a new resident and a new consultant to also be part of medical education so they are becoming a presenters and also speakers in BDLA. Yes. The amazing thing about um, uh, when we talk about the specialty of dermatology, skin is the biggest organ in the human yes. body and it also is the organ that shows the most manifestations for other diseases and symptoms for other diseases. So yes. having that control and having that education um, in this field is important in order to forward, as you have uh, mentioned. Um, the conference agenda actually includes a series of lectures and panel discussions yes. over a wide ranging of topics. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Sure. You know, in dermatology, we have two parts. One is medical dermatology, yeah. in which we talk about the diseases, and the other part is the aesthetics. Yes. So initially, in the conference, main focus would be on medical dermatology. So main talks would be about atopic dermatitis, update in psoriasis therapeutics, update in vitiligo, in which there is an FDA-approved yeah. medications, updates in alopecia areata and the new medications, mm -hmm. and updates in other medical diseases and dermatopathology and diagnostic. Yes. Regarding the other part, which is the aesthetics, lasers, and plastic surgery, we'll also will share the most uh, and latest evidence-based medicine in which uh, we will share the highest uh, in new medications and uh, fillers, botox, exosomes, skin boosters, and workshops about latest lasers and how to use them and share knowledge about them. And also in plastic surgery, there will be also sharing workshops on the latest techniques in plastic surgery. That's amazing. When we um, talk about medical dermatology and aesthetic dermatology, yes. they actually do uh, go hand in hand yes. uh, together. Aesthetic dermatology and plastic surgery is used a lot uh, with burn victims, True. alopecia victims as well, uh, sometimes in some cases. And um, when it comes to medical uh, dermatology, it's always changing. Yes. And you guys focus on the region's most prominent issues that are here. True. So you mentioned alopecia, you mentioned um, psoriasis and yes. these things. How do you focus on the research that is being done here? Is that because of the region's most prominent diseases? Uh, this is one part. The other thing, the problem in medical education, uh, especially in dermatology, when we go to the conferences in the States on Europe, they focus on white skin. Yes. Actually, the region here have different varieties of colors. Yes. You know, skin types, we have around seven types. Yes. Okay. So the problem we and teach uh, our resident or students only about white skin, yeah. they cannot diagnose the people with darker skin color. Mm -hmm. So the focus here on different skin of color and also different ethnic groups. Yes. The, the same disease, for example, if talking about vitiligo, is not an issue in the fair skin because it doesn't show. Yes. In Bahrain, it is very important for patients of vitiligo to reach for a treatment and proper management. Yes. The other thing, for example, is SLA, mm. uh, systemic lupus erythematous yes. disease. 
And dark skin is difficult to diagnose because the redness will not be shown easily. Yeah. So that's why it's very important to have our conferences here in the region to share the experience of, from people who see the patients from the same ethnic group, same skin of color, and share his experience in management. Even management will be different. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays, for example, if FDA approved certain medication, it will be actually uh, having three phases of a trial on different ethnic groups, yeah. on ma mostly Caucasians who live like in the States on Europe. Will not be tested in there, well, and it will not be uh, tested on people, on with people the from the same yeah. uh, thinking group here. So, uh, sometime we share the experience, the medication will be failing in our region while successful there, or the other way around. Yes, absolutely. Um, also, one thing that uh, I wanted to ask, and I was interested in: Do other specialties come in within with dermatology exhibition in order to see because yes. it, it sort of touches on them? I mean, you've mentioned um, things like uh, vertilago and everything, and that has a big mental uh, health capacity to yes. some patients. So, do other specialties come to see what's the news in the? Dermatology? Yeah, it's very important. Actually, in BDLA, we have a section in which we actually host pediatricians, mm -hmm. rheumatologists, ophthalmologists. ENT doctor, plastic surgeon, and other medical specialties, even nephrology, hematology, uh, uh, gastroenterology, because a skin, as you said, is just a mirror to our organ. So yeah. sometimes we see a skin lesion and we refer the patient to cardiologist yeah. or nephrologist or rheumatologist. So we have different sessions to share the experience in different diseases like rheumatology or mm -hmm. pediatrics or genetologist yeah. also. And uh, that's good also because we as dermatologists, we need to know those doctors so we can refer them easily and we share our knowledge. Right. Um, doctor, I mean, the, the issues of health are ever uh, changing. We've went uh, through uh, the COVID disease and all yes. of its repercussions. <coughs> um, even if it's, uh, its repercussions after taking the vaccinations, after having uh, COVID and yes. uh, now on the horizon is uh, monkeypox, yes, uh, yeah. a disease that's been there for a while, but now uh, media is shedding more the light on it. And it is very close in yeah, the, yeah. the dermatology yes, more than course. anything else. So what can you tell us about the updates on these most recent issues that are all over the place? Uh, regarding, for example, monkeypox, we'll have some presentation talking about it, how about how it diagnoses, therapeutic, and the risk of it, and importance of immunization for people who work in the health sector. Yeah. But just I want to convey a message to the public that it's not really a serious disease mm -hmm. or highly infectious. Mm -hmm. So people should not panic. Yeah. Only those who work in medical field have to take the vaccine. The rest of people have just to take care of their hygiene, yeah. washing hands frequently, and if anyone is suspecting that he having this disease, he have to go to the emergency. Right. Get the information from um, uh, places that have the, the strongest uh, backed up information yes. or evidence on that. Moving on in this part, um, the Kingdom of uh, Bahrain always provides a lot of support in uh, um, supporting these conferences yes. and everything. But specifically, <coughs> this conference has uh, had a lot of support from um, the Bahraini government. Tell us about that and why is that so vital in the health sector? True. Actually, we got a huge support from Bahraini government. And this actually showed that uh, the government is really uh, giving support for medical education because they have a look that they want Bahrain to be a medical hub, actually, or a hub for medical education. And we can see that Bahrain actually have all the things needed for medical education. We have excellent two medical big universities. Yes. We have research center, we have training center, and we have a lot of hotels. Bahrain is highly connected. We have excellent airport, mm -hmm. the causeway. And people love to come to Bahrain, not only for medical uh, right. tourism or education, because also they can do tourism and other things. Exactly. So it is a suitable place for people from the east, the west, and, and it is in the middle. And getting visa for Bahrain is really very easy, yes. just online or most of the time on arrival. on arrival. So it is the right place for medical education. So now, uh, and alhamdulillah, we have a lot of conferences. If you can see that every month, this month we'll have like ENT yeah. conference, we have the BDLA, next month we'll have the psychiatry and others. This actually make the Bahrain in the map of medical education and I hope at the moment, for example, for BDLA, we have around 700 guests coming from Bahrain and regional That's area. Amazing. Our aim actually next year to attract even a lot of international guests to come and be part of the conference also. That's amazing. Um, dermatology, laser and aesthetic conference and exhibition actually contains a lot of committees as well. Yes. And uh, these committees, uh, they have leading members um, uh, on all of them that serve 
uh, several goals. What can you tell us about these committees, these mm -hmm. people, and why are these committees a part of yes. the PDLA? Actually, in PDLA, we have first the advisory board, mm -hmm. which are the pioneers of dermatology in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. So one of them uh, is our uh, leader in dermatology, and uh, the first Bahraini dermatologist is Dr. Khalil Arayat. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud that I'm his student in the residency. And the second one is Dr. Ibrahim Qirata from Bahrain Defense Hospital. And the third one is Dr. Samir al Batruk, the pioneer of dermatology as a female in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is Dr. Tariq Saeed, also a pioneer in plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. So this is the advisory board in which they will guide us and help us to make the uh, conference in its best way. The second committee, actually, is the uh, executive committee mm -hmm. in which Dr. Amin al Awadi is the president. And Dr. Ahmed Shahda is the vice president, and I am the general secretary. And we have two more doctors who are doing the scientific program. Dr. Uh, Wissam Al-Arayad, mm -hmm. who is the head of aesthetic uh, committee, and Dr. Fatma Khamdan, head of medical dermatology also committee. Mm -hmm. So these are the main two committees. We have other committee also, which is the organizing committee, mm -hmm. which Dr. Mohammed Shahda and also Mr. Graham, Mr. Ahmed Shahda, and others. Mm -hmm. And the other one is also a very important committee, is the scientific committee, in which really they will uh, have a contact with the speakers and with the agenda, and then review it again with the executive committee and uh, finalized with the advisor board. And this mainly Dr. Wissam Al Arayad, uh, he is head of the aesthetic dermatology committee, and Dr. Fatma Khamdan, and they have vice president, uh, Dr. Hassan Khalaf in aesthetic committee, and Dr. Jawahar Jalahma in medical dermatology, and also Others. So these, all of these committees actually, will we have actually continuous work. Yes. Uh, you know, since last uh, the sixth edition, we have a lot of meetings to finalize and also put a theme for the conference and put the latest updates and review and finalize. And people who come to BDLA will know the kind of work and uh, load that been done by the of these committees. Yeah, that, that would have been actually my next question. There are a lot of um, new uh, tactics, new um, uh, treatments, yes. and new machinery that is going True. to be uh, announced at the BDLA. Yes. How do you um, filter to, to choose these specific treatments or these specific machines okay. to be um, presented? Uh, in general, we go by evidence-based medicine, actually, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, we believe in science. Yes. We don't just go because it is a trade or exhibition, no. Exactly. So, for example, for if we talk about a new medication, it should be first FDA approved, mm -hmm. or at least there is a research behind it, okay? Mm -hmm. Regarding machine, also most important is safety, so yes. it, should do, it should be also approved from FDA or the CE. So safety f come first and then research. Yeah. So in the conference, it is the right time to discuss those machines or medications because we can share our experience freely without any pressure from any, any company or other people. Right. And that's also a, a very good point to emphasize here that any uh, device that is used uh, in the kingdom in uh, its uh, centers or clinics yes. uh, is FDA approved. It's uh, approved by the uh, ministry and by Nahra itself yes. and goes through rigorous, True. rigorous, rigorous uh, testing before it's yes. actually uh, used on clients or patients, as we say. So um, what can you tell us about uh, the speakers? I mean, I saw the list of them, yes. and some of them, you just know them from uh, reading um, certain uh, PubMed editions or True. even seeing uh, certain illness that come uh, out. So who are the speakers of the conference? Um, okay. They are local, regional, and international, but why are they so important? Actually, we chose the most any pioneers in their field. So uh, we have uh, from the region, uh, one of the most famous Arabic pioneers in dermatology and laser, who is from Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, Dr. Ahmed Al Isa. Mm -hmm. He is really one of my uh, best teachers because he talks about the latest updates in general and will give a uh, critical uh, discussion about each new machine or medication. The second one also from Saudi Arabia because we have Dr. Uh, Ru'al Harthi. Mm -hmm. She is vice president of Saudi Derm of Society yeah. and she is famous in academic dermatology, aesthetic, and medical dermatology, and also she is part of a lot of conferences in the region. Mm -hmm. Also from Saudi Arabia, Dr. Abdullah Al-Aqil, who is head of society dermatology. Okay. And from their uh, other regional, we have speakers from uh, Emirates, uh, Oman, and Jordan. Also we have uh, Professor Mohammed Tora and Professor uh, Asim, uh, sorry, I'm bad in names. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And we have also Dr. Dimitri Dimitrov from mm -hmm. Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. And we have also from Bahrain, a lot of speakers from the government hospitals. We have from uh, King Hamad, Dr. Ahmed Al-Jodar, 
Dr. King Hamad, uh, sorry, from King Hamad Hospital, Dr. Ahmed Al Jodar. We have Dr. Fatma Hamdan, Dr. Amin Al Awadi from Salmania, and other doctors from uh, BDF. And also, we have uh, from Bahrain uh, a lot of actually doctors who are in private and government will be part of the conference. But the main names, as I told you, the previous ones. It, it's uh, really good to see a lot of uh, Bahraini doctors um, that are going to be on the list because they are um, already very well known. Most of them, uh, you've mentioned Dr. Yes. Ahmed Al Joder uh, and yourself as well. And uh, having that closeness when it comes to the exhibition and seeing that uh, in action actually gives a lot of. Um, uh, solitude and, and, and um, let's say trust in uh, the uh, dermatology yes. field here. W one of the things that I was really interested in um, the sixth edition was there was a whole part about burns. Yes. And um, that for me was amazing because I was trained also under uh, uh, a plastic surgeon uh, from Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Dr. Fuad Hashem, who also specializes in that. And I saw that there's so much uh, potential in the treatment of burns yes, and true. aesthetic treatment of them. Is that something that's going to be also addressed? Yes, because we have a full day about plastic surgery and burns and surgical workshops. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will be addressed because uh, Dr. Tariq Said, which is head of the plastic, yes. he had uh, invited a lot of uh, esteemed speakers from Bahrain and the region. And they will discuss the plastic surgery, burns and surgical workshop also. Okay. Um, another thing is that the BDLA is not only for the um, doctors that are going yes. to be available. It's also open to the public as well as healthcare workers such as nurses and people, True. interns, residents, people that want to learn. Why is it important to have it for all uh, healthcare practitioners? Because, let's say uh, I have my clinic. As a doctor, I cannot run my clinic. I have to have my full staff, which will have a nurse, a technician in the lab, and other allied healthcare, like yeah. infection control. All of these people have to have knowledge in dermatology to work in a facility like a hospital or a center. For example, if the nurse is not updated about laser yes. or medication, exactly. she cannot really handle the complication or handle the patient in the hospital or a center. So everyone in medical field have to have continuous medical education and updated m medical knowledge. Otherwise, he cannot really and Continue. this is a chance for it. The BDLA does give that latest information for everyone. Exactly. Um, what can you tell us uh, about the strategic partnerships with leading organizations yes. and associations? And how are they going to contribute to enriching the outcomes of the conference? Yes. Actually, uh, we signed with a lot of regional uh, societies. So uh, first, uh, let's say uh, about Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Bahrain, we are in partnership with uh, Bahrain Dermatology Association. Yeah. And also with Bahrain Medical Society and with NHRA. And then regarding the region, let's start from Saudi Arabia. So we have a uh, signed agreement with the Saudi Derm uh, Society and also Saudi Derm Conference. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have a lot of speakers from, from Saudi. Saudi and we have also uh, from Emirates, Emirates Dermatology so Society. And from Emirates also, uh, we have the RADV, Regional Academy of Dermatology, mm -hmm. Dubai Derma and Oman Derm in from Oman and uh, from Kuwait also Kuwait Derma and Jordan also we have uh, signed agreement with the Jordanian Society of Dermatologists mm -hmm. and we are looking also to sign with other international uh, let's say societies like American Academy and European Academy in the next year so the aim actually to have those is they, they can provide us with ex excellent speakers and to show experience in, sh in organizing the conferences and also sometimes to have a uh, common guidelines regarding certain diseases. So right. it's very important at the end, at the end uh, of this, actually our aim is to improve the patient care in dermatology in the region. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the conference is a platform for um, companies that are providing um, materials used in the treatment yes. of uh, dermatology, plastic surgery, and other um, uh, dermatology linked uh, diseases. Um, it's a platform for them to showcase what they have, what's exactly. coming up new. Um, what would you say to these companies now? What should be their mm. main goal when coming? Actually, BDLA would be the right place to have launch of a new medication in the region because it will ha be a hub for all of dermatologists in the region and all ha people who have interest in dermatology yeah. because sometimes dermatology is not only for dermatologists. Dermatology sometimes is important for rheumatologists, yeah. for ophthalmologists, exactly. for plastic surgery. For so it's really a specialty that's important for a lot of sub-specialties. So if a, a company have a new medication, a company have a new machine, if a company want to do workshop or training, the right place would be BDLA because around 700 people who have interest in dermatology would be in the same place for three days.
That's amazing. I mean, also one thing that I was really um, happy to see, BDLA always emphasizes to provide awareness for the public as well. Yes. So they do have their speakers, the doctors True. and the medical scientific um, uh, talks, but there's a lot of awareness that is also given to the regular public. Yes. How important is it to choose the topics of awareness to address? Actually, we should follow the social media because unfortunately we as a doctors, we don't give a lot of advice for people in social media. So unfortunately, people will take their information from, I tell them like uh, a false doctors yeah. or uh, just... Uh, false experiences or whatever. Unfortunately. Yeah. So actually, we should choose the topics, the common topics that really people are interested in, especially like aesthetics part. Yeah. And then we focus on tho those and make awareness in social media itself and also in the newspaper. So sometimes uh, at the end of the conference, we give our... Uh, guidelines or our uh, final notes. We have special uh, advices. We give it also for the people, not also for the doctors. Yeah. <coughs> also, when um, uh, we were looking at uh, the topics that were addressed uh, the last time yes. and the topics now, um, it's also important to point out that the updated information from last time, last mm -hmm. year's exhibition is going to be updated yes. uh, this year. Um, are these topics that are of interest because they pertain to the region or is it because of the speakers that are coming are the same ones? How do you target that? Actually, the scientific committee, when they meet, uh, they will choose the topics according to the need mm -hmm. of the doctors and also the residents and the updates and medications. For example, th this year we have uh, Jack inhibitors new medication. Okay. So it is in the list because yes. something in you and we don't know much about it. We need to discuss it. Yes. So uh, exosome, for example, or skin boosters. Also, a lot of doctors are using it and they want also more information. So we put it on the list. Monkeypox, for example. Mm -hmm. It is something still emerging. Yeah. So it is in our list of scientific It was committee. discussed actually the last time and now again. Yes, but yeah. now again because of the uh, media and of the, the media. cases yeah. also increase. We need to increase the awareness of doctors, nurses, medical allies on people about the disease and take the information from the right place. Yeah. Um, uh, the Ministry of Health, Nahra, and other entities uh, yes. within the Kingdom of Bahrain are very vigilant when it comes to uh, the types of treatments that are available, yes, the course. doctors that are treating, yes. um, the protocols for the patients as well. Um, also, that the patient is within the right state of mind to do certain procedures, yes. especially with aesthetic, because that can uh, sometimes go um, out of hand. How is that collaboration with these great entities here in Bahrain that work really day and night in order to make this available? Yes. Actually, I would like to thank them for their great job they are doing, because that's not easy task to do. Mm -hmm. We have hundreds of uh, clinics, hundreds of uh, new products are yes. coming every year, hundreds of machines, so it's not easy to give license for and each of these, but uh, I'm actually, when I go to any clinic as a patient, I'm happy that there is something called NHR in Bahrain because the machine, I'm sure that didn't come to Bahrain unless it's have all of the paper cleared and the machine is genuine and the maintenance is done yearly. Yeah. Because if anything, any the owner of the clinic didn't do any of this, his license would be provoked. Mm. So. I'm glad that we have that's the such standard. things. Yes, yes that, that's the standard. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, um, we're going to go now towards a little bit the end of this discussion. Um, there's a lot of people that signed up to be at the BDLA. Yes. And uh, that particip participation is not unheard of uh, with the BDLA, but this year especially we have a lot of people. How do you um, value this kind of participation? Yeah, I'm so happy that I'm seeing a lot of people are interested, first of all, to be part of BDLA as attendees or speakers. And we have a lot of people are still applying now, even though we have the schedule, still people want to be part of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we cannot accommodate them this year, but we uh, will be open for them next year. But regarding the attendance, I'm seeing a lot of people, not only from dermatologists, also, as you said, interns, uh, GPs, family, uh, residents, and also other specialties, and also plastic surgeons, yeah. all of them, they want to be part of PDLA as attendees and also speakers. So I'm happy because this means they are eager for medical education. And actually, as a doctor, I want everyone to be have continuous medical education, reading journals, attending conferences. Otherwise, uh, the medical experience will yeah. be low. Well, would be not uh, worth. But yes. also, one thing um, that's important to point out, 
is the BDLA is also very uh, renowned here in Bahrain yes. and in the region because of the constant development that is witnessed by dermatology, laser and aesthetics field in the Kingdom of Bahrain yes. particularly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is a place where people come to in order to get these True. treatments because of the high caliber of doctors that are here, the high caliber yes. of clinics that are here. What do you tell us about um, why that is such a positive thing? Actually, uh, Bahrain is really a medical hub and medical tourism since many years. Mm -hmm. uh, Bahrain was leader in education. You know, first school was in the early 1920. Yeah. And we know the first doctor, Dr. Ali Fakhro, since the 60s in Bahrain. Our hospital, Salmania, is very old. So yeah. we have actually cumulative experience mm -hmm. in medical uh, field compared to our region. So Bahrain, as name, f any, you tell anyone from the region, Bahraini doctor, first of all, he will have a trust. Yes. And this is very important in medical field. Absolutely. Because without the trust, he will not believe in your diagnosis or medication, and then he will end up going medical shopping with endless results. Absolutely. So we utilize this as uh, actually something to promote Bahrain more regarding to be a medical hub. And alhamdulillah, we see a lot of our patients, I'm talking about dermatology, a lot of patients from GCC country. Yeah. Always we see uh, clients from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, uh, Emirates, and Oman. And they are coming to Bahrain, first of all, because of the trust. Second of thing, they want also to do tourism at the same time. Yes. So <laughs> So two, two and one, one that yes. works out. And, and one thing that um, I have witnessed, not just as a nurse, but also being and living in Bahrain, there is a very close collaboration between the doctors of Bahrain. Yes. You will always have that opportunity where if you want to get a second opinion, your actual doctor will tell you, okay, go to this person, do this. True. Because there is that tight-knit so society when it comes to um, the medical field and the doctors in particular. True. What do you th talk about, uh, say about that? I mean, how is it important to have that kind of... and close-knitted um, community. Actually, it's very important uh, to have a network of trusted doctors. Yeah. So if anyone come to me and he need to go for plastic surgery or general surgeon, I'll call the doctor directly mm -hmm. and refer him the same day. Yes. Because I know them personally. Yeah. So that's why it's important in uh, people to attend BDLA because it is the right place to meet all of doctors Network. from different specialties. Networking is very important in all kind of business, which mm -hmm. one of them is dermatology. Yes. So if you know that surgeons, gastroenterologists, pediatricians, it will be easier for you to be known and to send the patient to the right person also. Absolutely. Um, uh, doctor, how uh, or what are the expected recommendations and outcomes of the conference yes. now? Actually, uh, we'll be more focused on updates of management and update in diagnosis and also campaigns uh, regarding certain diseases will be also announced in the conference, actually. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, since we are having cooperation with uh, Bahrain Association of Dermatologists, there will be also a lot of joint uh, activities will be announced, inshallah, in the end of the conference. Inshallah, we're really looking forward to that. Um, at the end of our show, um, I really want to get from your uh, point of view, what are the, or how do you see or imagine the future of dermatology, laser anesthetics, yes. uh, not just in Bahrain, but really regionally, locally, yes. uh, that was coming up? Actually, I see a big improvement and big jump because dermatology is really dynamic field. Mm -hmm. A lot of new medication, biological therapy is really booming now. Yeah. Lasers and aesthetic medicine is really having a big jump. So my expectation in the next few years, we'll see a big change and uh, what we know now <laughs> will be really part of the past and we have to learn from Absolutely. Okay. Doctor, um, thank you for being with us. Before we let you go, I just want uh, to have a word from you yes. uh, to people who will be uh, coming to BDLA. Yes. Um, what, uh, what are they there to look, what can they look forward to? Actually, I have to look for the latest updates and I'm sure they will love the conference and they'll come every year and it will be a chance to network, to have hands-on training, mm -hmm. to add in some workshops and also to discuss their experience with doctors from the same field from different countries. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saint for Thank being with us today. And we thank you, dear viewers, for watching. And we will see you next week in another episode of Panoramic Edition.